Tonight at the upcoming World Cup, which is being co-hosted by Japan and Korea, EA Sports has released 2002 FIFA World Cup for the GameCube. If you've played FIFA 2002, you'll be able to jump right into 2002 World Cup, but if you've never played FIFA or you haven't been playing FIFA in the past few years, then the gameplay will actually be quite a surprise to you. Uh, the biggest difference is that crosses are handled much differently than they have been in previous games. Before, they, when you did a cross-field pass, the ball would automatically track towards a teammate in the middle of the field and you'd be able to score a goal rather easily. Uh, in 2002 World Cup, the ball doesn't automatically track. In fact, you actually have to turn your player around so that he faces the middle of the field and you actually have to put spin on the ball, either left spin or right spin, to get it to curve left or right. EA Sports added an assist feature for those that might, might have found this to be a little bit too difficult, but it really doesn't help you all that much because all it does is when you're facing uh, away from the middle of the field, it'll actually make the ball go, go towards the middle of the field, but you still have to put spin on it. So it's still pretty difficult to get a good corner or a good cross field pass. Smaller elements of the game have also been changed. Ground passing and shooting is dependent upon how long you hold down the button. So for example, if you want to make a strong pass, then you hold down the pass button for a long time until the meter in the bottom left hand or right hand side of the screen charges all the way. Uh, if you want to make a stronger shot, then you have to hold down the shot button and it'll charge the meter as well. It's the little changes like this that have really slowed down the pace of the FIFA series and made on, on the whole have made it a lot more realistic than previous games in the series. However, there are some lapses in the AI, particularly for the goalie who will sometimes miss the ball when it rolls right next to him. Uh, there are also times when a player will completely ignore a ball and actually run away from it when, even when there are no other teammates in the vicinity of the ball. But in general, these don't really happen too often, but they happen enough that they're noticeable, but it's nothing that'll drastically affect the gameplay or your experience with the game. The frame rate in the GameCube version of the game is the most solid out of the three versions available. When you make a midfield pass through the air, there's not as much noticeable slowdown in the GameCube version, whereas the other two versions, there was some real stuttering problems. However, in the cutscenes, during the celebration sequences, and during the introduction of the teams, you'll notice that the frame rate actually has some problems in the GameCube version. It's not quite as smooth as it is in the others. Also, you'll notice that the character models in the GameCube version of the game don't look quite as crisp and detailed, which doesn't mean that they look bad per se, but still you can notice that some of the details aren't quite as uh, obvious as they are in the other versions of the game. Otherwise, the GameCube version of the game still looks really good. The stadiums are amazingly detailed. The crowds are all vibrant. You can see them cheering, waving flags, throwing streamers down onto the field. and it really adds the overall atmosphere and the excitement of playing in the World Cup. You, know, you actually feel like you're playing for the richest prize in all of soccer. The commentary in the game is once again provided by John Motson and Andy Gray, who do a pretty good job of uh, livening up the game with varying comments. Though, when you enter into the World Cup tournament mode, uh, you'll find that Andy Gray tends to repeat team-specific lines a little too often. For example, he'll have this one line about Italy scoring 105 goals in World Cup history, which is among the highest of any team and he'll repeat this line over and over again as you go through each game in the World Cup. It gets a little annoying but in general John Motson's play-by-play -play is good and Andy does throw in enough comments to kind of change it up a little bit. Great attack here, this could spell danger for the defense and the keeper watches the ball go out off the post. The gameplay in 2002 FIFA World Cup is solid, there's a lot of depth to it. Um, you'll you'll have fun trying to learn how to use all the different soccer strategies, how to do crosses effectively, how to do little inside give and go passes. Uh, the sound is excellent. Uh, the stadium noises are all good. You have individual nation chants, which are really well done. Um, and then there's plenty of detail in the stadium. The, s the fans look excited. The crowd looks excited. And despite the frame rate issues that the game has, the game still generally looks good. And while it's not, it doesn't offer as many modes as FIFA 2002 does. Gameplay is really unmatched.